You're listening to Bible Truth Feed, a podcast by Christadelphianvideo.org for Christadelphians and all those seeking the truth about the Bible message. Join us now as we present our latest episode. Hey, Bible students, welcome back to Christadelphian Videos. We hope that you've been able to see the videos that we've put in this series, Great and Precious Promises. Uh, Today, we're looking at one that deals with the inner man and the development of the inner man and what it's related to in the promises that God's given to us. But we can't afford to forget what we've done. So you may remember that uh, we're working on 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4, about these great and precious promises that God gives to us and through which we are being saved. So if you can remember the letters G-R-A-W by just saying to yourself, GRA, and that they represent great resurrection, uh, the angels and work. And then last week on F for forgiveness, you're, you're doing what we hope you would do. Because really, that's the idea of it. You put it to your memory and imagine being able to think of great and precious promises every time they're needed. And it seems in life now, we, we need these more and more. So this one, The Outward Man Perishes, is from the quotation in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, where it says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. So, Bible student, is it or isn't it? Do you really feel that your life is being renewed by the fact that you, you can deal with the outward man perishing? Like, you know, we're, we're speaking to older people probably first that would recognize the difference. They can see that, yes, the old man is, is just like an old body that is perishing. And we go to the doctor for this and for that. And you know, finally, where we, we see that we're not too good in our memories, etc. But God has blessed us, promised to us that the inner man can be renewed day by day. That's the key. If the inward man can be renewed, how does it occur? So this, this little promise that we're dealing with today, it, it's I standing for inward renewal. Well, let's have a look at what it's about. So we must understand our beginnings. And many of these promises stand against the fact that we're troubled. And yet we are troubled because the sentence against Adam for disobeying God was dying, thou shalt die. It's a dying process. You can see it right in the record in Genesis 2, verses 16 and 17. It says, The Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Or as the margin renders it, or as if you've done a little Bible study into this, it's it's almost like a Hebrew uh, idiom. Uh, You shall surely die, or dying you shall die. That's why we put that little title on dying thou shalt die so we're probably from the day we're born cells are dying there's a dying process going on but the renewal has been happening behind the scenes until we get old enough that we start to be aware of it so we're sad that fruit had it such an appeal because of the words of the serpent that we've all inherited this curse that was placed upon people who disobey God, and we know that we are also in that line. So older students, yes, and uh, old people themselves would be aware of Psalm 90, where David talks about the days of our lives are 70 years. And if by reason of strength they are 80 years, yet their boast is only labor and sorrow for it is soon cut off and we fly away. So yeah, we, we disappear when we die, we fall asleep. That's the, the, the lovely way God ex- expresses it in his word, 
that we just lose consciousness. But we look, of course, to the promise of resurrection and renewal. So this idea of 70 years is what happens when some of uh, our children get to, you know, 50, 60 years old. They start to recognize that things are happening. And what do I do about this? How do I deal with the way I now feel that I've never felt before? But God has said, you should be able to renew the inner man. In other words, the, the mind that's behind us, the thought processes, the thoughts that have been made up because we have read the Bible and we have believed it. And we look forward to the fulfillment of these promises. That's where the inward man is renewed. But you can never really imagine anything quite as difficult as Jesus had to deal with. And, uh, you know, mind over body, well, yes, you can, you can imagine Jesus when he sweat drops of what would appear to be blood as great drops of blood falling to the ground when he was thinking about what he had to go through, the way he would be treated, how he would die. He would die such a slow and painful death. Would he be able to endure it? But his mind was able to strengthen him to overcome. And you can see that in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 12 or chapter uh, 12, rather, verse 2, looking at unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. So Jesus had it in his mind. He knew what the joy was that God had in store for him, following his resurrection and given an immortal body. And concentrating on that, he was renewed in spirit. So he, he didn't succumb like his body did to just give in and uh, let everything go and, and uh, you know, just do whatever suddenly came to his mind. No, he kept control of himself, even citing a passage in the Psalms to help people who couldn't understand what was going on. Well, the nails gave him great pain and suffering. He overcame them by what was in his mind. But what is in your mind as a Bible student? Like, I've had to deal with this myself in, in, in showing this and going back to the Old Testament and looking at these things. Who really rules us? Do we let our, our you know, our hunger, uh, our feeling for needing entertainment, our feeling for going on holidays, does that rule our spirit? Or are we lacking in self-discipline? Because you see, the Proverbs say it very clearly, Proverbs 25, 28. Whoever has no rule over his spirit is like a sea broken down without walls. And, you know, you have to look at a city broken down without walls. Look at what the homes would look like to understand what the, the writer of the Bible is saying here to us. If you do not have rule over your spirit. Now, Jesus obviously had rule over his spirit. He refused to let what was happening in his body, this pain and suffering, rule what he said and what he thought. He kept his mind on what was leading him to, to make the sacrifice, and that was what was going to come after his resurrection. Now, look at a few examples here, just as we uh, try to round this out. Th this is a good one, because here's a man who's exhausted, but still in pursuit. And his name is Gideon, and he persevered. You see, from time to time, we feel exhausted. We might feel exhausted from just trying to serve God. But he never gave up. So it says in Judges 8, verse 4, when Gideon came to the Jordan, he and 300 men that were with him crossed over, exhausted, but still in pursuit. See, the mind was controlling them. The inner man was being renewed. This was the work of God. This is what God strengthened us to do. It's not over. This, this, this enemy that came into our land is, is still there. So he continued on, just like people in a race, you know, that maybe have to be helped at the end because they're such a, so exhausted with a, maybe a long distance race, but didn't give up. They continued on and, and others even helped them. Look at the depression of calamities that David had to endure. Now, when he came back to Ziklag, as we're told in the Old Testament, that's where his family 
uh, resided while he went off to the Philistines thinking he was going to go into war against Saul. When he came back, the city had been burned. There was no sign of his, of his wife or the wives of anyone else. But David strengthened himself. Now look at this passage. This is this illustrate how to, to be renewed in spirit. It says, 1 Samuel 30, verse 6, Now David was greatly distressed. So much so the people spoke of stoning him because they were distressed as well. Because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in Yahweh his God. Now, that's the secret, Bible students. We need to be able to strengthen ourselves in our God. How would we do that? Especially if we came to our house one day and it was just um, smoking embers and there wasn't any sign of any life and we didn't know what had happened. We could be very distressed. Certainly people had to, have, had to deal with calamities and still do. We need to have that strength that comes to us from our belief in our God. You think of Naomi. Naomi was a woman who left Israel to go into uh, Moab. She went in with a husband and she went in with two sons. But when she came out, her husband had died. Her two sons had died. And she had two daughters-in-law, one which stayed in Moab and one which came through her. Naomi name meant pleasant but when she came back to the people in Israel she said don't you call me Naomi because she was bitter in spirit well it didn't last for long because as the record tells us in Ruth 4 verse 15 talking about Boaz that he may be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age for your daughter-in-law Ruth who loves you who is who is better to you than 10 sons has borne him. And that was this new little baby, Obed, that now was going to sustain her in the sense that there would be an heir of her family, of her husband. And uh, it was a, a wonderful story. It was certainly a strength to see how this woman, Naomi, so encouraged Ruth, a foreigner to her, but so encouraged her about her God and what the belief system of the Israelis was that she stayed with him and uh, or stayed with God and stayed with uh, Ruth, uh, stayed with Naomi rather, so that she could then become married and bear a son to continue the family. It's a wonderful story. It certainly would be encouraging to people who are somewhat in the same situation today. Well, the Bible goes on to speak about a whole group of people who died without fulfillment, having seen them afar off. You know, you would expect, well, if God made a promise to me, well, I, I should see it sometime while I'm alive. Well, there were a lot of promises that people did see while they were alive. <clears throat> but some of them had to be believed that they would not happen until they had been resurrected from the dead. You see, if you don't believe in resurrection, then you really can't believe this promise either. But Hebrews 11, verse 13 says, these people that he mentions all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were assured of them, embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Well, they were really convinced of them and they knew and understood where they, where they stood on these matters so that they could have that kind of a belief. And, you know, whenever you go to Israel and you go to the cave of Machpelah and the monument that's built over it, you have to think about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and their wives who are buried there. Because Jesus alluded to the certainty of the resurrection of these men and them receiving the promises that they have not yet received. Land promises, promises of receiving land in the present uh, world in which we live. So there's a lot of promises there. Bible students understand them. Bible students will read to have a greater understanding of them. And sad, sadly, those who don't read the Bible, there's not much we can do for them because they're all Bible-based. So this promise is an interesting one. And it's one that we will from time to time in life feel a need for, that the outward man may be perishing, 
but the inward man need not perish. He should be renewed every day by reading the Bible, by praying to our God, being in the company of fellow believers, a wonderful thing. So I stands for inward renewal. And next video, we want to talk about something we call <clears throat> shall be added unto you based on God or in Jesus words to us in Matthew chapter six, that if you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things shall be added unto you. So it's something that deals with the time right now, what God will do for us presently. S shall be added. And Lord willing, in our next video, we will put you know, flesh to that and, and make it so that you can understand it. And it can also be a promise that we will uh, base our, our future life on and believe in our God for. So until that time, May God be with you and bless your belief and your study of his word. Thank you for joining us. We hope you found the episode helpful. Don't forget, most of these episodes are also available as videos on our video channel, cdvideo.org. So head over and take a look. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions, please get in touch or leave us a voice message. We love to hear your feedback. You can email us at bt f at cdvideo.org. If you enjoyed the episode, then please share it with others. Until next time, may God bless you in your studies and your walk towards God's kingdom. Amen.